Lock it in. Lock it in. You want me to check the channel? Uh, for sure. GMS will be attempted to. Like and subscribe. Tap <laughs> the bell notification. We hit the bell for notifications. Yeah, yeah. Stay updated when we get a new video. Yeah. All right. That's good, man. Lock in. First and foremost, we're going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakadash. Double honor to our apostles, the elders at Great Millstone, the men that taught us this truth through spirit, peace and blessings to the elect of the house of Israel that scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. We are the brothers of Great Millstone. We are back here again through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai. We have a special guest in the building. Introduce yourself, my brother. Dr. Bashar from GMS South Holland. Shalom. All right. And um, Lord is willing, this is edifying. And you know we living in a time of prophecies. We are living in a time where the signs that the Lord told us to look out for is happening before our eyes. And we have to continue to watch out. And that's the only thing that the Lord set us up to do was to watch and to give the people warning of what was going to happen before it happened. We ain't supposed to take up arms. We ain't supposed to march and protest. We ain't supposed to do rap videos and movies. Only thing you're supposed to do is watch as well as pray and give the people warning. All right? Got a few seconds. All right. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 9, verse 1. He answered me then and said, Measure, the, measure thou the the time diligently in itself. Measure thou the time diligently in itself. How do you do that? With the measuring rod, which is the scriptures, right? The scriptures is the measuring rod that you measure what's going on in the world compared to what's written in the book. So that's how you know what time you're in or how much time is left based off of the events that the Lord told us to look out for. Okay? And this is why we know that this is the end times. We are living in the end of days. Okay? Second answer is 9 and 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. <laughs> and when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Then you're going to understand. You're going to have that, ha, oh, shit. This is what the most I was talking about, right? You're going to have that, aha moment. Like, oh, now I get it. Now I see what the scriptures is talking about. Because it's one thing when you're reading the scriptures, but it's a whole other thing when you're actually living what you're reading. When you can see the prophecies live in living color with the wars and rumors of wars with Israel and Palestine and now Iran is threatening uh, America. You have Navy ships of America off the coast of Israel or going towards Israel. So we can see the wars and rumors of wars. We can see the famine. We can see the pestilence. We can see the earthquakes in diverse places. So it's one thing to read it, right? But it's a whole nother thing. That's why the scripture says, Then thou shalt understand that the most I speak of these things in times past. Got okay. it? Um, verse 3. This is a precept to that. This is 2nd uh, Ezra 4 and 37. By measure hath he measured the times, mm -hmm. and by number hath he numbered the times. Mm -hmm. And he doth not move nor stir them until. The said measure be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. right? The appointed time. Yeah. Right? The appointed season, the appointed time. Right? So these prophecies all have a date. Yep. Right? Now we don't say what the date is because no man knows the day, the time, or the hour. But the most high has like um hands. So, Signs, signs. Of, yeah. yeah, like proximity minds. Yeah. When you reach this point, right. this is going to happen. Right, right, 
And that's the time, the length of time. As time progresses, another prophecy is going to happen. Right. Another prophecy is going to happen. That's why the scriptures say, as travail upon a woman a with a child. There's a spirit. Yeah. I was just thinking about that because I believe in that same chapter it speaks about just like with a woman when she's pregnant, right? Yeah. The set measure that the Heavenly Father gave towards uh, concerning prophecies is the same thing as when a woman is pregnant. The time is nine to ten months. Right. If it's earlier, it don't work. Right. If it's later, it don't work. It has right. to be this set appointed time and that's according to the will of the Most High. That's right. You know? This is Habakkuk 2 and 3. Bring it <laughs> For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. But at the end it will speak. And these prophecies are singing, man. The wars, the commotions, the uproars of the people, they're singing. The words are singing in real time. It's manifested in real time, present day. There's people dying. The nations are telling each other to back down. That's the wars and rumors of wars. But there's no turning back. Once the wheels are in motion, okay? But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. It shall speak. What shall speak? These prophecies A Christian's worst nightmare. A Christian's kryptonite. A Christian's kryptonite is prophecies. They can never talk about prophecies, which is the spirit of the Messiah, whom they claim to believe in. When the Messiah was on the earth, he was giving you prophecies. So that's how you know the servants of the Messiah, because they are speaking prophecies. They're not waiting for the prophecies to happen to talk about it. They're telling you what's going to happen before it happens. That's the spirit of a prophet. Yeah. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. So the Lord said, though it feel like it's going to take long, though it feel like it's going to prolong, tarry is old English for prolong, right? So those that don't feel that way, it's not going to tarry. And it's going to happen, meaning definite. These words are definitely going to happen. These events is definitely going to happen. And we're living it, man. And we how we know that we're living it? Because you see us, the prophets, right? The prophets are the living example that the words of the Lord are true. Because before anything happens, before any judgment happens, the Lord sends his prophets. He sends his watchmen. He sends his messengers to give you the heads up, let you know what's about to happen before it happens, to give you a chance to get right before you get caught up into the judgment. So this is how you know that the prophecies are true. Go ahead. If we ask these three in one, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. So the Lord is dealing with order, okay, like we're going into. Everything that the prophecy is coming to pass now, this is when the Lord had to come to pass. He said what? Oh, wait ye upon me. Okay, so this we, we move it according to Yahweh and Yahweh's time. I'm going to jump down. It says, Ecclesiastes 3 and 8. A time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. Right? We're not in the time of love and hate. Okay, that time is going to be in the kingdom. Okay, but right now we're in a time of war and a time of in a time of hate. Excuse me. Okay, in a time of war and a time of hate, man. And we see, and that's all. Everything that we're watching right now is prophetic. Yep. And it even says a time to break down and a time to build up. Build up right. right. So this this place is going down, man. So mm -hmm. Nothing to to build up again. Like Trump said, make America great again. What 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 the hell is great about this place? And when what period of time was it great? Thank when you. we when you had us in slavery. <laughs> right. That's it, bro. You know? Mm -hmm. That's exactly but it's gonna be turned around, man. We're gonna build up Israel and we're gonna use you to do it. You understand? Yep. I got you. I got you. Back you up, bro. Yep. Oh, 
guess. The book of Ezekiel says he said that. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 25, verse 12, it reads, Thus saith the Lord, power, because that Edom have dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance, and have greatly offended and revenged himself upon them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, power, I, all, I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom, it will cut off bear and beast from it, and I will make it a desolate from Timon, and they of the nine shall fall by the sword. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel, and they shall do in Edom according to my anger and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord power, man. And that's what's written. You will pay by the hands of the Lord's people. So the Lord is going to give his people a chance to get their licks back. Right? right? right. Everything that you did to the children of Israel, of the hardcore bondage, right? Brothers just came from the Museum of Natural History, that damn cemetery, because yeah. that's all it was, was a goddamn cemetery and a, and a, um, a, a, a war closet of fucking paganism. Uh, a memorial to paganism. That's what the museum is. It's a cemetery mixed with, uh, 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 you know, you got a closet or um, a cabinet in your house with all your trophies. Right. That's what the museum is. It's a cabinet filled with Esau's trophies yeah, right. that he stole from other people. That's right. Right? That's right. Exactly what it is. That's what we was witnessing. Nothing in there belonged to Esau belong to Americans. It was things that belonged to other nations, right? But that's what Esau does. He keeps trophies. He keeps um, tokens of what he d of accomplished on the planet Earth. So the Lord is going to give us vengeance for everything you did to his people, man. Yeah. Did, you see, did, you, did you see that video of Vulcan alone? Uh, with this other bald dude and they said like, uh, yeah, um, y'all talking about y'all going to take vengeance, but y'all y'all not going to do anything. Y'all talk about That's spiritual right. power, but y'all not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. this, this scripture here shows you that the Lord is going to take vengeance by the hand of his people. Yeah. So what is that madness? You know, these Christians are played out. Man. They, right. They're talking all this, this crap, and that shows us they really don't know the scriptures, man. Right. You know? Exactly. And they don't deal with the so-called nastiness of the scriptures. Exactly. Or ugly of the scriptures. Because you, God is love. God is love. Yep. But I see nothing but hate, yeah, exactly. war, and bloodshed in the Bible. Yep. That he that he ordained. He orchestrated. He commanded his people to kill the other nations. To yep. take over right. it. Because the Lord has a favorite and he has a favorite to hate. Yeah. But I got something for you, Al, because you said, where is this, we go to conquer them, and where is this slavery in the Bible? Well, th this is out the Messiah's mouth himself. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 20, it's a here. Yep, 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. You got it, huh? Yeah, you see that? So the Heavenly Father is going to strengthen, going to strengthen his people again, man. Right? You understand? And he's not dealing with, with, uh, with high numbers. The Heavenly Father is just going to grab a select few, give them power, and all those weapons that he's going to be making nowadays, man, ain't going to be able to, to beat the elect. You understand? The scripture says uh, that the lamb, sh they shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome. So the victory is already written. You understand? Right. And now we are telling you, listen, the victory is already written. You right. choose what side you're going to be on. Mm. As Yahweh said, he that gathereth not with me, scattereth abroad. He mm. that is not with me is against me. Mm. So it's, a, it's your choice, man, what you want to do. You know? 
You want to be destroyed with this kingdom or you want to be the one that is doing the destroying? Because it ain't going to be nice when, when, when the brothers receive this power, man. You know? The Heavenly Father is going to put His Spirit upon us and then we're going to feel what real anger is. You know, because we, we, we don't know what real anger is, man. That's right. You know, we only see what our eyes can witness and or what we can see on the TV. But the Heavenly Father has seen everything throughout all the generations and years. And not in one spot, but in all the places upon the planet Earth. Right, all the unrighteousness. So that anger and that spirit is going to come on us. <laughs> and that Esau is in, in trouble, man. Got you. Jeremiah 30, 16. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. And all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. Mm -hmm. See that? But Christians don't read that. Christians don't read that, that captivity is coming back, you know, that violence is coming to the earth, you know. And there was this experiment in, um, in Holland, this dude in Amsterdam, what he did was he covered the Bible with the cover of the Quran. And then he went to read uh, scriptures verses. in the city, yeah, verses in the city. And then he, he asked the people, are you a Christian? Yeah, I'm a Christian. Oh, you go to church? Yeah, I go to the church. All this, this hypocrite type of stuff going on. And then he read scriptures and they looked like, oh, that's the Quran. Yeah, that's why I don't understand this, this Islam that's belief. Crazy, you crazy. see, it's only violence. That's not of God, this, that, uh, and third. And then he take the cover up. He said, this is the Bible. Bible. Mm. And whoa, oh, is that in the Bible that show you? Exactly. These Christians don't know what is in the Bible, man. They don't got a clue. I have a quick precept. Yeah. Okay. So I don't want that. Yeah, let me just finish. Yeah, finish. Yeah. Every one of them shall go into captivity, and they that spoil thee shall be a spoil. And all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. You mm. see that? And we are a prey until this day, man. I just told the brothers about the thing that happened in Amsterdam a few, uh, a few years ago. You know that they put all Jake in one in one neighborhood and they just crashed the, the plane into it, man. Jake is afraid, man. Esau wants to get rid of Jake. You don't want to see Jake in the new so-called new world that he has in front of him, man. You understand? Bring down world population to five hundred million. He ain't, he ain't no Jake in those five hundred million that Esau has in mind. Right. <laughs> Shit. So this is Ezekiel chapter two verse ten. And he spread it before me. It's like, yeah, let me start at verse 9. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 9. And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without. And there was written therein lamentation and mourning and woe. Right. You see, so when we go into these scriptures, that's what you find in it. You find lamentation. And whoa, you find destruction, you find violence. And we 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 accept that that's within the scriptures, man. But these scriptures, uh, these Christians, they do not accept that that's actually what the scriptures is about, man. Right. Violence, destruction upon this earth. And that's why, I mean, you say that's why, um, I mean, Hamas in Israel, you got Jake over here crying and mourning about it. Right. They don't understand this is actually prophetic. These things have to happen in order for the Lord to return to deliver us. And it has nothing to do with you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and your plight. Thank you. Nothing to do with you. Thank you. This is between two heathens, all right, the uh, so-called Jewish people and the so-called Arab people. That's who it's between. It has nothing to do with you so-called blacks, Latinos, Native Americans, and your plight and what you've been going through and what happened unto your people. In these in these places, man. And particularly here in America, it has nothing to do with you, all right? But but yet you sympathetic, you sympathizing with a bunch of damn sand niggas, yeah. All right, and yarmulke hat wearing imposters, man. Okay, who took your took actually your identity? That you, that's who you truly are. You're actually the Jews, but they will never tell you that. <laughs> But they'll own all the stores and they'll they'll actually do business with these so-called Arabs. Alright? Yep. At the same on, on at the same coin, you know, on the same, you know? Mm -hmm. but, 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 but see, you 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 idiotic so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans are, are are putting your 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 uh input into something that has nothing to do with you. The prophecy is 
that they're going to get blown out of that land, all right, and the elect of the so-called black Latino Native Americans are going to be put back in that land when Yahushua returns. But no, oh, you want you want to you want you want to uh, go to bat for some some damn Palestinians. Mm -hmm. Or hell, how about dudes like Amari Stoudemire? Mm -hmm. Who mm -hmm. Whose side do you think he's on? Yeah, just he, he, he's, he, you know what I'm saying? So you you niggas are a mess. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, bro. And, none of, and real quick, none of them none of them fight for you. Yeah, none of them care for your plight. At all, bro. Your struggle. You being killed by the police, right? Yeah. yeah. This is Jeremiah 28 and 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. You know? Yeah. And that's, and that's uh, these state nations today. We prophesied against them of wars, evils, and pestilence, these are key things to know who the prophets are today. All right, if someone's telling you about sunshine and beautiful days and love, they ain't there in the right spirit. All right, they ain't preparing you for the times ahead. Okay, the truth is, when, you, when you're dealing with the prophets, they're supposed to tell you about these things. So when you see wars happening, you go understand that hey, this is a prophetic moment. Yeah. All right, this is signs of the times. Uh -huh. All right, of wars and of evils and of pestilence. And we're telling you, we've been telling you through the spirit, things are going to get worse. All right, there's a lot more death and destruction. The Lord's going to be only going to deliver a, a small elect, you know, that's been following his law, statutes, and commandments. See, you order them churches, they ain't going to teach you about the law, statutes, and commandments. So, what you're going to be destroyed, and your blood's going to be upon, upon their hands. Why? Because they didn't warn the people. Yeah, my brother. Our, uh, our scripture? Yeah, bring it up. This is uh, Jeremiah chapter 37. That's like in Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 37, concerning what you just said. Behold, I will gather them out of all countries, whither I have driven them in mine anger, and in my fury, and in great wrath, and will bring them again unto this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely. You see? So like the brother just mentioned, you know, Jake is going to be put back in their own land, man. Okay, and that's the time when there is going to be peace. That's when they're going to dwell safely. So if those people that are in the land right now are the original Israelites, the real the real Jews, then there would be peace over there in the land. There ain't no peace over there, man. That shows you that they ain't the real people, that they are imposters. That's right. You understand? This is... Uh, that, uh, yeah, that was it. Okay. This is Isaiah chapter 2. Right? Let's see. Where should I start? Let me start at one. The word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come you and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the house of the power of Jacob and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And is that happening hmm. right now? Absolutely not. Those people over there in the land is not the people of Jacob. They're a bunch of damn liars. They're the people of Esau, actually. Yeah. You know, and, and they're fighting with the people of Ishmael, who are enemies to, to Israel, to the real Israelites, you so-called black Latinos, Native Americans. You see, and up, oh, let's go to verse 4. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares. Who got the, who, who, who who's over there running the, the, the damn, uh, the Israeli, Israeli uh, uh, intelligence system, man? Yeah. Do they not have a bunch of swords? Do they not have a bunch of weapons? Mm -hmm. Do they not uh, have a nuclear capability? So how do they fit this prophecy? They're not beating their swords in the plowshares. A plowshare is a farming tool. You see? There's no peace in that land. There hasn't been peace in that land. Ever since they got up in there. 1948, Balfour Declaration, the annexation, 
All right, and they still don't got all of the land because they're go they're they're uh, fighting with the damn Ishmaelites, man. It's a mess. But is it is prophecy that how you should be able to be able to tell that these are not the people of, of, of Jacob, the true yeah. people of Jacob. You see, the people of Jacob are over here in America, where this brother is from, uh, Holland, Netherlands, all throughout, scattered throughout all of the earth, man. Yeah. So-called blacks, Latino, Native Americans, and those that descend from them, man. And their spears into pruning hooks, nation shall lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Come on, man. When brothers brought out earlier, we're in a time of what? War, man. Because that's what you, all you see that's going on on earth. People bombing each other to hell. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Yeah. So it can't be the real people of the Lord. Even that that um, that uh, name Hamas yeah. is a Hebrew word which means violence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on, man. And then the scriptures say when Israel is back in their own land, there there will be peace, no more war. You know, right. they exactly. shall meditate upon the law. Right. They're gonna have a heart of flesh. Yeah. But 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 now what do we see? It says that uh, more than fifty percent of the people in Israel is atheist. Mm. <laughs> but the scripture Come says on, everyone will follow my ways when right. you're back in the land. That's right. So it will be no need to teach each other. Yeah. Because everybody's gonna know the Lord. That's right. Why is that land riddled with peas, pea files? Mm -hmm. Right and homosexuals and damn uh, uh, rainbowism, man, wickedness, man. Why is it? Why, why is it? Why is it riddled with that stuff? All this damn wickedness. Come on, man. You you put one and one together, man. Right. Go ahead, bros. I got the uh, Ezekiel. Yeah, bring that. Ezekiel. Let me see. Um. We'll finish this up real quick. Yeah, uh, Revelations two and twenty seven. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. So the Lord is going to give his chosen ones, his believers, power over the nations to dash them to pieces, to break them. But I thought God so loved the world. I thought God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son right. that whosoever believes upon him could be saved. Yeah. But in Revelations, he said he's going to give power over the nations. So which one is it? Does he love the world? Or are you going to have power to break up nations? Yeah. It's got to be one or the other. Because there's no contradiction in the scriptures. You know? Right. You got it out. Um, this Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 24 for I will take for I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land then will I sprinkle clean water upon you mm. and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you a new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you so you not the people you so-called Jew, 1948 is small hat. You're not the people of the Lord. None of those scriptures fit you. You didn't fulfill none of those things going back into the land in 1947 or 48. Hey, when did the Lord take you from, you know? When did the Lord come and, when did the Lord come and deliver you? This church speak about by eating bread of deliverance from when we left Egypt. And that was a, that was a great deliverance. You know, it was the miracles and just the difference. Right. So when did Yahweh Shai ever come back? You know, you going to jump over all these prophecies and both you and Israel? They don't even believe the Messiah came at all. Exactly. Yep. They That's still right. waiting for a Messiah. That's right. Yep. And I'll be damned if I, we got to wait another 2,000 years of Esau ruling. Got you, bro. Man. Ezekiel 35, 14, and 15. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh by Shemiah Shai, when the whole earth rejoices, rejoiceth, I will make thee desolate. As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate, by way of Balfour Declaration, 
There's another scripture in here in the book of Ezekiel tells you how they took, they, they parted the land. Right. You know, but I'm gonna read on. So will I do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, in all Idumia, even shot. all of it. And they shall know that I am your help. Watch your mouth shot, see? Yeah, the Most High has a gripe with Edomites. Big time. He has a big, big gripe with Esau like Edom. Yeah, that's what you know? Done. That's why we know that you are the Edomites. You Caucasian people are the house of Esau. Because there's no other despicable race of people than Caucasian people. You know? That's right. This is uh, chapter 36, Ezekiel 1, 5. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, by Shemel Shai, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart. Yeah, you go into war over a land that doesn't even belong to you. That sound doesn't that sound familiar? Right. You know? What the British and the pilgrims did to this place? Exactly. The colonizers did to this place. Showing it's the same people. It's the same formulas. It's the same wickedness. It's the same wicked crime. You part in the land, you making borders. You divided it amongst yourselves. It doesn't even belong to you. Yeah. All of Arabs. Again. Uh, you know one thing that's that's heavy about this prophecy that stands out about the Balfour Declaration when you go into it and you do the research. All right, when whoever wrote it, I forget the exact person that wrote the thing and they sent the letter to the Rothschild. To the Rothschild, right? right? It was the minister of um uh, um, um, how do you say it's that? all good if you, you know. The Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs. The Water. From, from, from Britain. The Water. Yeah, I don't know his name. It's all good, bro. What, 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 what was in that letter, he said these, the, you know, pretty much that those words. It is my joy to pretty much, you know, let Rothschild know that, you know, the, the, the land is ours now. Hmm. You know, so it's, it's heavy the way the, the prophecy states that because that's exactly what they did. Or that's exactly how it was written and worded in the Balfour Declaration. It said that I've appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds. Because why? They knew that they are the biblical Edomites, and that if they control the Holy Land, that they will pretty much be able to do whatever the hell they want. They can they can control the narrative. They could, you know, put all kinds of propaganda and lies. And the world would believe them because they had the power. Yeah. The spiteful minds. Because they really know that they're not really the people of the Lord. Right. But they don't want you to know that. They want you to believe them that they're the people of the Lord. And they belong there. Right. That's, that's, that's what it means by the spiteful minds. Go ahead. Pick out an article. Huh? This is uh, Earl, Earl of Balfour. Arthur James Balfour. The water. I'm reading it. Go ahead, Brother Balfour. Balfour shot. On November 2nd, 1917, Foreign Secretary Arthur James Balfour writes an important letter to Britain's most illustrious Jewish citizen, Baron Lionel Walter Rothschild, expression, expressing the British government's support for a Jewish homeland in Palestine. The letter would eventually become known as the Balfour Declaration. Okay, right there in black and white, proof. Mm -hmm. All right, about what we're reading is true. Right. You know? Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay? And that, and how does that make you the people in the land? Like, how does that give you rights? It doesn't. How do you make a declaration that the land is ours now? Exactly. And now the whole world just got to bow down. Yes, Lord Rothschild. Yes, e Great Esau. Exactly. Yes, Balfour. Yeah. You're correct. The land is yours. They're devils, man. That's right. You're deceivers. I got a quick precept. Go ahead. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 49, verse 11. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. Yeah. That's why you made Israel a state. 
Like, who gave you power to do this shit, man? You know? But the scriptures say that the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. You con, you literally ploy people into giving up their lands. I forgot, man. It escapes me. But um, I think Manhattan, I mean, the land of Manhattan, which was owned by the Gattis, the North American Indians, they sold it for something cheap, yeah. like a couple of thousand dollars and maybe some beer and some natural resources. Because they didn't know you could fucking sell land. They didn't know that it was worth selling. Because the land belonged to everybody. That's how they looked at it, yeah. They even gave some uh, some land away to Esau, right, when he came. They didn't know. But this devil, this scheming devil, but yeah, I could capitalize off of this. And he signed these contracts, made them sign these contracts that they would have ownership over the land and they could never fight for. Them. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 55. Because everything that's happened, everything that happened and is happening is biblical prophecy. That's right. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 55, verse 20. He hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He hath broken his covenant. Any treaties, any deals, any agreements that he makes, he breaks, man. It says, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. So he would sit there and tell you one thing, but in his mind, he's conjuring and scheming how to take over or how to kill you, That's right. how to get over on you. And that is the M.O. or the, the, the formula of an Edomite, man. Yeah. It says the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, Yet were they drawing swords, man. Right. Because that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I was thinking about this. The same thing that's happening uh, nowadays, right? They want to speak about, yeah, um, we want to help everyone. You yeah. Know, for the C-19 and right. stuff like that. Right. Talking about, you know, the, 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 the beetle juice is free because we want everyone to be healthy. Okay, why health care and free then? Why health care and free? And the same guy that was um, um, whose words were smoother than butter is saying he's still doing the same thing. Thanks. He's manipulating people into thinking that he's a good guy. He's a good guy, you know. And you know what the what the what the villain always does in 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 the, in the movies? He actually tells you his plot. Yeah. So that's why we were talking about a couple of movies today, right? Like yeah. he's are showing you straight in his face. Yeah. Because that is also that goes hand in hand with his witchcraft. Yes. That he needs to speak about what he's gonna do. Right. Otherwise, it's not gonna work. Otherwise, right. it's deemed yeah. as evil. He needs to tell you, hey, I'm gonna do this, that, and the third. Right. I remember I was uh, I was with my father, and uh, I told him, man, uh, Bill Snake said it's for depopulation. Right. The jet, uh, you know, the the beetle juice is for depopulation. He said, Nah, get out of here. Mm. He didn't say that. I showed him the video. We want talk. this for depopulation. Ted talk. He, he was like, "Yo, that's crazy. That's evil." Because they want to be the they want to be yeah. the on the on the left hand side. Yeah. Right. That's why the scriptures say this. This is Second Thessalonians. Um. If somebody got some young guy, real quick, this is Psalm uh, fifty fifteen. It says, "Uh." Uh, verse 16, here's a claim. Psalm 50, 16. For unto the wicked, the most I say, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? You know? You got it? No, no, go ahead. And you, you know, that's that's what it is, man, because they're in our lands, right? And they talk about, they acknowledge the Bible as a Lord of land, and they, they talk about being the real Jews and, and whatnot, but what are they doing to show that? Nothing. They ain't keep the Lord's statutes and commandments. It's not one of them. That's why they have uh, Tel Aviv and they do all types sorts of um, 
unrighteous acts and deeds. I don't know if it's coincidence. Yeah. You know? And what not, man? Yeah, our pages, our pages will get taken down yeah. for mentioning what they're living. Exactly, yeah. yeah. What they do in real time. Exactly. We'll get pages taken down. That's right. We're the, we're the bad guys. We're the bad guys for yeah. saying it, but they're they not the it. bad guys for doing it. Doing it. Oh, yes. And this is the wickedness of Esau and Edom. Damn. It'll cut your whole channel, bro. <laughs> oh. Erase you. Erase your shit. Like, you ain't never existed. Yeah. Sometimes not even a warning. Yeah. Not even that's a strike. Right. Sometimes you stick as well, brother. We've all, we've all been there. I remember when we were speaking about the passports of the, you know, the C-19, that they yeah. was going to come with the passports. We basically prophesied that. Right. And they took it down. They said that's misinformation. But then when the when the passports came, right. where's your channel? It's still down, showing you it's not misinformation because it came to pass. Right. But they ain't contacting you like, hey, we your channel. Oh, yeah, yeah, here's right. your channel yeah. back. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> because they trying to do away with the truth. Yep. Yeah, that was, that was good. It's the second Thessalonians chapter two, verse four. It says, "Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called the Most High," and that's include that includes his people. He he he, he professes himself and exalts himself above all that is called the Most High. That's why he said, "God is white." Yep. The son of God is white. The closest thing to God is the Pope, which is white. That's right. Right? The angels are white and naked for some weird degenerate reason. reason. Yeah. <laughs> some sick reason. The obvious reason, yeah. Yeah, we know. But yeah. if we say it, we're bad guys. <laughs> you made the fucking angels and statues naked. Mm -hmm. You fucking you perverted, freak. You perverted. You sick. sick. <laughs> you <laughs> degenerate. Lunatic, sick, leprous dog. That's right. You know, you scum a leg. That's right. You know, yeah. you made these fucking pictures and statues. We right. didn't do that shit. Exactly. But we're bad guys for saying it's wrong and evil. You know, but it says who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called the most high, all that is worshipped, so that he as the most high sitteth in the temple of the Most High, showing himself that he is the Most High. And that's where iconoclasm comes from, right. which means the defacing or the, the, the whitewashing of the images, right? That's right. He whitewashed. You, you type in any prophet of God is going to be an a Edomite. The you dark art of Europe, mm -hmm. except Ham. So when you look up Noah, right. he's white. When you look up Sham and Jephthah, they white, but then Ham is black, <laughs> so called black. How is that possible? Right. right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Makes no sense. Man. And then according to the Bible, everybody had color, except for you, exactly. Esau, Edom. Yeah. You That's was it. the first freak of nature on the planet Earth. Yeah, you're the first anomaly. Wasted away is he. You came out looking undone. Yep. So it says, Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know what withhold holdeth that he might be revealed in his time. And he's being revealed now, man. He's being revealed to be known as the wicked, man. That was it on that. Got something, bro? Uh, yeah. Um, this is um, Isaiah 29 verse 16 Surely your turning of things upside down Shall be esteemed as the father's clay For shall the work say of him that made it He made me not Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it He had no understanding Yeah so, so Esau be turning everything upside down man. Esau The only reason Esau looked at the scriptures Was to find artifacts To, to really look whether the scriptures is right you know like today we was walking through the museum with all this information he don't get it right he still want to want to claim that the scriptures use a fairy tale book right. he got all that information out there man 
with all that information and all those artifacts out there, he should be the one proclaiming the Bible is the ultimate history book because everything is on point. But instead of that, he's twisting and turning and you know pushing this science, pushing falsely so called like the scripture says, pushing that we are we come from monkeys, you know, which makes no sense. Man, you got all these artifacts showing you that the scriptures is on point, but you want to push. The Darwin theory, which he himself said on his deathbed that it, it was, it's not right, man. Right. And like the scripture says, it's not right neither. Because not all, uh, um, what does it say? Not all flesh is the same flesh. Right. You have the flesh of, of uh, animals, you have the flesh of fowls, you have the flesh of fish, you know? But then he want to push that. And he want to say that he's a God fearing nation. Come on. Oh, it's a bunch of madness, man. Confusion. That's, right. That's why this is modern day Babylon. It's confusion, man. Shit. That's right. Yeah. This is Isaiah 26, verse 10. Let faith be shown to the wicked, yet will he not learn righteousness. Let favor be shown to the wicked, yet will he not learn righteousness. And has not favor been shown to you, so called white people, man? You are in rulership, for crying out loud. Starting with the Greeks, man. Mm -hmm. All the way back to the Greeks a couple thousand years ago, man. All right? Philip of Macedon. But he didn't quite do the job. It was for his son, Alexander. All right? They called the great, all right, to go on that epic conquest for 12 years across the whole Eastern Hemisphere and wreck havoc and take over every damn thing, all right? But then what happened? He had to split it up. He had he died, all right? And he had to split it amongst his four generals, and they had all kinds of wars. And what did it say? Wickedness increased right. in the earth, right. all right, during the time of the Greeks. So that's what you contributed to the earth, all right? The Lord gave you favor to rule, and look what you did. Look, 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 look at the results. Confusion, you know, evil, you know, on a on a on a on a very high level, man. That's what all you so-called white people have contributed to the earth, man. All right, the water's polluted, the air's polluted. This brother could tell you, coming into here, coming into New York City, is a goddamn nightmare. Yeah, man. All right. Damn. This is what this is all because of you so-called white people, man. Yeah. You did this, man. You know? Let favor be shown to the wicked. It says, yet he will not learn righteousness. Because yep. you wouldn't pollute the air if you were righteous. You wouldn't pollute the water. You wouldn't pollute the damn minds of the people. You wouldn't allow wickedness to just have free reign and have everybody's goddamn uh, mind messed the hell up, man. But you got drug addicts out here. You got flaming moles, pedo. Take pedos, all kinds of just madness. That if you just take that away, the world will function a lot better, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. no, justify it. Go ahead. Yeah, you got you got this movie. I was a some freaking B movie, man. I remember I shared it with the brother, and he actually watched the whole thing. But the movie was about that AI had to make sure that peace came on the earth. Like robots had to make sure peace came on the earth. What did the robot start to do? He started to kill Esau, man. And then Esau was like, why are you killing us? Yeah, you the problem, man. The problem. Esau is the problem. You want to make peace on the earth? You want to make the earth a better place? Get rid of Esau. And that's what the Heavenly Father said, man. He needs to be done away. He has to be like a dream, man. Fade away like a dream. <laughs> that's how righteousness comes back to the earth, man. And who's at the forefront of it? Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is what? He's the what? King of righteousness. Yep. So that's who we, you know, patiently and earnestly waiting on. Yep. You know? I got a precept. All right, bro. This is uh, Revelation chapter 11, verse 18. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath has come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints and them that fear thy name small and great and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth that's what you so-called white people 
are going to suffer. You, you're you're going to reap. You're going to reap what you sow, man. You destroyed. You have. You're destroying the earth. All right, and you're going to reap the uh, the repercussions for it, man. All right. You see, let favor be shown to the wicked. Yet will he not learn righteousness? Read on. It says in the land of uprightness. And we deal on just the land of uprightness. And where is this? What is what is going on? This whole melee between the so-called Israelis, right, and the Palestinians. And where is that? that? That's that's the land of uprightness. That's the pit pursuing the second Ezra, the fifth chapter that the Most High chose. But he kicked his people out of that land. So that's no longer, you know, pretty much, you know, the focus, you know, the focus is with the people. Because Israel is a people before it's a place. But that is the pit that the Most High chose. That's the Garden of Eden. But look look at it now. You see? They're, they're dealing unjustly. All right? So what's the, what do you think is going to happen? It's, the Bible tells you what's going to happen. Esau is the end of the world. All right? And Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. Esau is going to be taken out of here. Man. Got it. This is Ezekiel chapter um, 7, verse 21. And I will give it into the hands of the strangers for a prey, and to the wicked of the earth for a spoil, and they shall pollute it. My face will I turn also from them, and they shall pollute my secret place, for the robbers shall enter into it that's and defile it. And that's the spirit. That's literally what's happening. That's what's happening as we speak. The brothers reading straight out of the word of Most High is actually what's what has been occurring even before 1948. But damn it, when the so-called white man established himself, oh man, it took off like you know, big time. Yeah. You know, they're, they're they're dealing unjustly in the earth. They're they're just they're just causing mayhem all over the goddamn world, man. All over the earth, man. Yeah, man. So the Lord is going, the Lord, Yahweh Shai, is coming with the reset. Not you goddamn devils at the WEF and the WHO, man. You ain't going to reset shit, but yo ass going into slavery and you going on the bottom from being on the top. Into in the shackles and chains, man. That's the reset that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is coming with, man. All right? You're not going to be prospering in this damn new world disorder. But that's what you're setting up. Not an order, but a disorder. You, you're calling for a great uh, uh, culling. You're calling for a great depopulation. You're not calling for life. You're calling for mass death. All right, but Yahweh Shai is coming with life for the elect. All right, he's going. He's going. He, this earth is going to be cleaned up, man. Yeah. And America is going to get burnt up, man. It's going to be a burnt mountain, like the Most High said, man. All right. Even even the animals, man, because um, ec the word extinction, extinction, it wow. wasn't, it didn't exist. Man. Thank you. Wow. That shit didn't exist, man. When the other nations was ruling, there was no such word as extinction. An animal yeah, went extinct. Yeah, that's, that's, that's only because of Esau, man. Yeah, that definitely yeah. is. So the that scripture is. says even the even the um, the creature is mourning uh, 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 because of this wicked, that's right. this wicked uh, devil, man. Yeah. Right. So it says, um, Ezekiel 7, verse 23, make a chain for the land is full of bloody wow. crimes. I love that scripture because when you really analyze it, what it's saying, what do you do with a chain? What do you do when you make a chain? What are chains for? It's to tie, it's the, it's the tie things up. Right. The whole thing's fast. <laughs> that symbolizes captivity, man. That's right. That's what you do with chains. You slap them on people, and you tie their ass up, you bind them, and you make them serve, all right? Slavery, man. You make them work. That happened to our people. Yep. Right. They made chains. How do you think the so-called blacks got on, got on them goddamn cargo slave ships? They were put in what? Chains. They didn't go on a free will. Wanted to say that. Got it, brother. Yeah, I just wanted to say that it was no free free will, man. I neither will it when we take this kingdom. Right. It right. says the saints shall take the kingdom. Right. Y'all ain't gonna give it anyway, so we're just gonna snatch it from you. And 
Yahweh Hashem Yahshai is going to give us the authority to do so. Because right. he will use his people to take this land back, man. To take this world back, actually. That's right. Bro. Okay. There ain't no democracy, man. Right. right. There ain't going to be no damn voting. Right. <laughs> there ain't going to be no UN meeting. Right. G8 summit. Give it up. It yeah. belongs to us anyway. Yeah, that's right. See, you're afraid to do that exactly. in this kingdom. Right? To just outwardly say, the world is ours. Exactly. We rule. Exactly. You afraid to say that. Yeah. See, you rule in secrecy. That's right. But in the kingdom of heaven, we're going to rule openly. It ain't going to be a secret yeah. society. That's right. It ain't going to be no hidden elites. Yahweh Hashem is going to be Yahweh, Yahweh Shah, King David, and it's going to be the elect, man. Yeah. Openly. Ruling. There ain't going to be no damn secret clubs and, you know, secret, you know, secret societies. Yeah, exactly. What kind of faggot yeah, shit. Yeah, that's some homo. That's man. some coward. That's some coward ass shit. That's some coward ass shit. Yeah, yeah we really controlling everything. But you can't outwardly control yeah. shit. Yeah. That's why this MOTB has to be pushed. That's right. So it says, um, uh, Ezekiel 7 and 23, Make a change for the land is full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. So the Lord is telling you why you, you, the chains are going to be made for you, because the land is full of what? Bloody crimes, man. Right. Okay? Go ahead. Wherefore I will bring the worst of the heathen, and they shall possess their houses. I will also make the pomp of the strong to cease, and their holy places shall be defiled. Yeah, man, because the Lord said what? Woe unto the bloody city, man. It is full of lies. Alright? Well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. From Great Britain to Germany to France to the Netherlands. Yeah, man. Okay? Australia, all right. You quickly jump over over the Netherlands because it looks like a small, insignificant country, but they was heavy in slavery. Yeah, they they, they, they was heavy in slavery. Part of the EU. Yep, they was heavy, man, in making slave ships. You know, you, we got this uh, this state in Holland, which is called Sealand, or Zeeland, Sealand, which is uh, um, uh, southwest of uh, of the country. And that's where they made all these ships, man. And you, the way it went, when a, a brother used to live there, and when we had the Passover over there, we, we went there, all the brothers went there. Esau be looking at you with, with, the, with, the, with the bombastic side eye, man. Like, what the fuck y'all doing here, man? They still racist as shit over there, man. They, ain't, they don't want to see Jake in that area because their, their forefathers was all these, uh, these builders, man, of these slave ships and shit like that, man. You know? Sorry, bro. Go ahead. And also, I was in Manhattan, and uh, I actually wanted to go to this place. It said uh, it's a memorial place where they dug up the bones of Africans. So you know, y'all know that place? Mm -hmm. It's so it's down it there at? in Manhattan. It said um, on the World Trade. I don't know, man. I wanted to walk there, but it said something to the effect Some like they African found burial, the bones. Burial, burial ground? Yeah, yeah I think I know mass, a mass burial ground of Africans. Then I was like, Africans? You mean, does this go back to, you know, slavery? slavery? slavery. And then I was thinking about going there and make a video because that's what they do. They build upon the bones of Jake, man, to make it pros uh, prosperous. You know, yeah. the catacombs in Paris, man. Bones, man. Bones of slaves, man. On top of it, they built Paris. You know, that's yeah. that witchcraft, man. Back you up. The same thing with, uh, I think, JFK, one of these airports, they're doing some work in there, mm. and they discovered it was like a burial ground Damn. For, uh, for slaves, basically. Yep. You know? And like I also mentioned to you today, like, um, the first Freemason Lodge in Holland was broken down, and on top of that location, they built the government house. Mm. You know, where they, uh, de where they debate the, the polit uh, political house. Right. You know where they have the debates who's gonna be the next ruling party and stuff like that. Right. But think about it. Wait. Why that location? They was doing a lot of rituals and witchcraft over there in that spot. Yeah. Break it down and build a government building on top of that. Shows you, man. 
Esau is all about his rituals and bloody crimes. Bloody crimes, yeah, like he said, man. And now he's in, now now he's in the land. He to, he he has to be rooted out of that yeah, land, man. He got a lot to pay for. And now you have Hamas, violence <laughs> coming for his ass, man. I remember the uh, the day that it started, man. It was in the news, breaking news. I woke up for work. It said. 1,500 missiles got shot towards Israel. I wonder why. Okay, the president, the, for, the former president of Egypt said it. They will never be able to live in peace because they left black and they came back white. That's mm -hmm. what he said. Gabal yeah. Abdel Nasser, he said that. And they know it, man. They know they ain't the people. You got any more, brothers? I got that's, that's Bring it out. Uh, Numbers 35 and 33. So he should not pollute the land where ye are, for blood it defiles the land. You bring it, bring it, yeah, bring it out. Yeah, yeah, good, yeah, okay. yeah, blood it defiled the land, man. And how can the land be cleansed? Only with the blood of him that shed it. So guess what? All these things that he has done, uh, that he done done, uh, done in the earth, all that violence, all that blood, bloodshed, it needs to be repaid with his own blood, and right. he knows it's coming. You see, that's why it says Satan know that he had but a short time. Mm -hmm. He's moving things up, man. He's hasty. You see? He's always talking about he the Grim Reaper, but the Green Grim Reaper is about to come for his ass. That's right. You understand? The Grim Reaper is really uh uh Yahweh Shah, man. You know, the angel of death is about to come over over him. You know, and just like in the times of Egypt, he's gonna pass over his chosen ones. And he's gonna do the killing towards Esau. Man. You know? Yeah. So it says, Numbers 35 and 33, So you should not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood is defiled the land. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. That's right. That's right. And this land was built upon bloodshed. Like we're talking about the grave and the discovery of graves on, on built land. This is, why, this is another reason. Why this place has to be destroyed and this rulers has to be destroyed. Yeah. And hey, the, the Pope had to come over here. He went to Canada because they found a Indian burial site under a school. It was like massive uh, 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 dead bodies under a goddamn school. And the Pope had to come over here and apologize. And do you want to hear the funny shit? The fucking, the fucking funny shit about it. So, you know, where Gad live is all fucked up. Yeah, They made new roads. They made cleaned up the neighborhood for the Pope to come. The roads that had been destroyed while Gad was living there. Oh, yeah, but yeah. since the Pope came, they needed a clean road so he could come down in his glass house wow. to apologize to the Native Americans. Wow. So they had money to fix the road for when the Pope came. But prior to that, the, 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 it was the hood. It was the ghetto. Yep. It was a dump. Man, it's a dump. Yeah, man. I mean, you look up oh, these reservations. They, they're like dump, dump places, man. Oh, man. This is the Revelation chapter 6, verse 4. And there went out another horse that was red. And power was given to him that sat there on to take peace from the earth. You got it out. Yeah, man, and that's what Esau did, man. He took peace away from the earth. You understand? But like the Heavenly Father says, he shall, he, he's going to rule for, the, for a little season. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that little season is about to be done, man. You understand? Right. And that's why the thing that these, these uh, Amalekites say don't make no sense about the Messiah still has to come because it speaks about um, uh, the 12 parts in 2 Ezra chapter 14. That 12 parts have to be done, and then the kingdom is going to be established. And that was, that was um, uh, what does it say, in the, in the tenth and a half part, when, when um, Ezra was on the scene during the Babylonian Empire. You see? And now tw two parts have already passed, man. We in the last days, man. And when Yahusha was on the scene, he already said, we living in the last days. That's uh right. -huh. You see? So it's about to be end game for Esau, man. And it's funny that he be making movies like this, calling it end game, apocalypse. He knows what's coming, man. You see? He's showing you it straight in your face. They got something called a doomsday clock. Yeah. Why do you have a doomsday clock? Why do you have a doomsday clock 
to show how close we are to the end. Because you know your time is short. And then seeing the prophets, your time is cut even more significant. You going to war trying to take over other nations, your time is getting cut even shorter. You cannot stop prophecy. It's going to happen. Like the brother said earlier, we, we read about the victory. We read about what's about to happen. And now we're about to live it, man. We're about to live it. We're about to live the downfall of Esau Edom. Esau being the end of the world. We're about to live the downfall of the age of the wicked, man. Yeah, he got to live to see the fall of his name. Oh, that's... Um, so I'm going to read this again. Sirach 25. Revelation 6 and 4. And it was Five, given seven, to him that he should take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. You got it, King. Yeah, man. And he's still using that sword, man. You see videos... And then they say, this is the Iron Dome. Live videos, man, the Iron Dome. Talking about the missile defense system. This devil, he, he is so about his weapons that he is able to defend himself mm -hmm. from a missile with a missile. Right. That's how far he went, man. It's like protecting yourself from a bullet with a bullet. You know, that's nearly impossible, man. But this, this devil is pulling it off because his blessing is the sword. He went on his knees crying to his father. Give me but one blessing, father. Crying. You see? And then his father gave him one blessing, which was the sword. There you go. But that same blessing was going to be his curse. Because even though the heavenly father used you as his whipping stick, that don't mean you, you're not going to be tossed in the oven after, after using it. I always use this example, like when you step into shit, you be looking for a stick to get the shit away from your shoe, but in the end, it helped you. But you're not gonna keep this stuff. You're gonna toss away the stick, man. Right. That's Esau. Esau was used for a certain purpose, but in the end, okay, you're gonna be tossed in the fire, man. Ain't no use for you anymore in the earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? Because in Ezekiel, it also says that he was that anointed cherub that covered it. Right. He was set up to do a thing in the earth which was, as soon as you come out of captivity, you're going to cover the faces of the judges thereof. Iconic lesson. Yeah. You see? You do that, you take peace away from the earth, okay, you deceive the people, then in the end it says, uh, uh, the truth shall flourish. That's the time we're living in right now. And the Mosa is reproving them in front of their eyes by setting up the servants and prophets. He's showing Esau what time it is. That's why during that New Jersey um, shooting, you know, when you saw uh, signs of Yahweh is coming, right. Oh, right, 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 they right. said they have, they have organizations set up to watch the Hebrew Israelites, man. Mm -hmm. They said it. They got or organizations set up to watch us, man. That's why they're so quick with taking down our videos, man. Yeah. You think this is all AI? Get out of here, man. No. It's not all AI. You got people watching us, man. Yeah. I saw, I saw the Apostle, Elder Apostle Tahar was live. It said something like 20 likes in the first couple of uh, um, minutes, but like five viewers. How do you have 20 likes, but five viewers? That make no sense. Exactly. Esau's playing around, man. But the truth, you cannot, uh, what does it say? You can't do nothing against, against the truth, but for the but truth. For it. That's, that's why they said that one of the problem in Hamas and uh, Palestine and Israel are the, the young black so-called yeah. black men in, uh, in America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's that's going in. Who, who, who think they talking about? The, the guys in the corner ain't doing nothing productive. They talking about the, the prophets, man, because yeah. the majority of them say young. 30s, 40s, 50s, that's young already, man. You know, but you got guys that we all came in at a young age. You know? yeah. So they're really, they're really singling out the prophets when they sing right. that. This is a uh, rock 25 and 7. There be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy, and the tenth I will utter with my tongue. A man that hath joy of his children, and he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. Yeah, man. And that's what we're doing, man. 
we waiting for our righteous king to return and to see the fall of our enemy, man. Esau is that bully. You see, he's that bully, man. And you want to see that bully get beat the fuck right. up, man. That's right. Well, you know? We the we we the we the we the younger brother, man. We we about to call our big brother and he's gonna do the job, man. Right. He's gonna beat the shit out of Esau, man. That's right. You know, he ain't coming back to talk neither. Right. You know, because Esau, let's bargain. Let's bargain, right? Ain't no bargaining, ain't no man. Bargain, mm -hmm. man. You know, Ezekiel, let me grab that on deck. It says that you ain't nothing, because he's gonna proclaim that he's a god, right? I'm a rough child. I'm an elite. You can't do anything to me. I have the money in the world. You see, you ain't going to be a god, man, in the, in the hand of him that slayed you, it says. Let me grab it real quick. This is um, Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse, um, let's see, verse 9. Um, Ezekiel 28 and 9. Will thou yet say before him that slayed thee, I am God? But thou shalt be a man and no God in the hand of him that slayed thee. You see? Yahusha is going to hold you in the air. You want to tell me you a God? He ain't nothing, man. Mm -hmm. He's going to kill you. You know? <laughs> that's the difference. When the Lord comes back, it's going to be a lot of killing. When you came into, the, into power, it was a lot of murder. Okay? Right. Unrighteous killings. These is going to be righteous killings, man. You see? Right, could you say, uh, what is it, uh, Matthew, the fifth chapter? Get that on deck real yeah. quick. All right. <laughs> We're going to tell you how Yahweh said. I got some. Go ahead, bro. Revelation 18 and 6. Reward her even as she rewarded you and doubled it unto her according to her works. And the cup which she had filled, filled to her double. That's right, man. Reward her even as she rewarded you. Right. And this is really tough. This is talking about the uh, so called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Israelites. What was our reward that was given to us from America, from this, this wicked rulership, from these Edomites? Slavery, death, destruction, okay? Miss, miss the uh, war course. We were put in the bottom, living in the slums and the ghettos. But now it's our turn to reward her. Who's allowed this? Yahweh Shai, the one you called God and Jesus Christ. Right. Okay, the most high Yahweh son of Yahweh Shai is allowing us to partake in, in the uh rewarded. Okay, the way we've been treated, we're gonna do the same thing onto you, but double. That's that's gonna start on this side, you know, the spiritual powers, and that's gonna carry on into the kingdom. Right. We have to build up our kingdom, we built up yes, but it's gonna be double. Okay, first of all, our kingdom be more decked out. <laughs> All right, that's gonna be way more harsh conditions, man. Yeah. All right, ain't, ain't gonna be no um, child uh, protection, no lawsuits. Right. You know, none of that, man. It's gonna be holy hell. We gonna be the law. That's right. right. Okay. Judge Dredd, I am the law. Right, right. Yep. That was a, an executioner. Yep. Yep. Judge and executioner. That's right. <laughs> you got it out. This is a Matthew chapter 10, verse 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. So there you have it. That's what the king of righteousness is going to bring to Esau's world. Not peace, because what does the scripture say? There is no peace to unto the wicked. wicked. Man. All right? So you're done. You're finished. You're through. <laughs> Stick a fork in the reason done. He ain't, he ain't making no peace right now. Right, so why you want to have peace in the how kingdom? Wanna, Thank you. Let's just continue, you know, yeah, what you want to decide all the right. time. Right. You just start it up. Exactly. But he's going to be like, mm -hmm. can you call Lazarus to dip his right. finger in water right. and to quench my... That's right. Fuck out of here, man. Right. Hey, no. He's going to be in trouble, man. I remember back in the days I was doing some research, uh, research on some plants, and I found this plant called Gimpy Gimpy. Mm -hmm. It's also known as a suicide plant. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you touch that plant, you're gonna be in so much pain, you wanna kill yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this pain keeps, keeps, keeps uh, um, cool. lasting, right. and then when the pain fades away, if water comes on top of it, it's like 
and it brought shit together. Wow. Yeah, man. And, that, and, and there was a... That's, um, that's far out, bro. Yeah, there was an Australian uh, soldier. He wiped his ass with it. He, kissed, oh, he ended up killing himself. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, he ended up killing himself. Oh, Gimpy, Gimpy, you can look up that plan. It's crazy. Yo, yo, that's, yo, yo, bro. He shot himself oh, in the head because the pain was so much. Yeah, man. He's still going to be sleeping on that shit, man. Hell yeah. That's right. Yeah, man. Yeah. Put it in the sheets or something. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm going to figure out a way. Oh, we're going to figure it out, bro. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. You're going to be picking it. Yeah. You're going to yeah. be sleeping with fire ants, <laughs> bed bugs. Yeah, man, because the animals yeah. is going to be fed up too, man. Oh, yeah, they got to get their lick back too, man. That's right, yeah. that's right. <laughs> I got to pick this up. Joe 14 and 5. <laughs> Wait, this ass. <laughs> yeah, man. Start bugging out and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My ass on fire! <laughs> yeah. And we going to do that. We're going to laugh. Yeah, exactly. We're going to fucking laugh royally. That's right. <laughs> Joe 14 and 5. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Spirit, man. Like, I'm still thinking about right. that. There's a spirit, because that's what we started this lesson off with, right? Mm -hmm. About the most I have set everything for his appointed time. You know, just like a woman that is pregnant, nine to ten months, that's, that's the time of pregnancy. You, you see? Now, the time of Esau's rulership is also set with boundaries, man. You're right. not going to pass this. You see? This is where it stops. And Esau sees it's, it's about to stop, man. And he, he's losing it, man. Esau's really losing it, man. Here it is. He's, he's, he's pulling all kinds of things out of the closet to stop prophecy. And then, and then he, he turns on our video and, and he's, oh, shit. Brothers say, God, Lord, how about Shem Yashah? Esau's fulfilling prophecy. He's like, God damn it, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Try something else. Hey, yeah, yeah. take down this video of these guys. You know, and, hey, he angry, man. Esau's angry. He know that he had but a short time. It's done. It's about to be finished, man. You see? You might as well move that doomsday clock to 12 o'clock, man, because it's, it's over, man. You understand? Mm -hmm. So that the number of his months are with thee, with, with the most high. Yep. Thou has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. So it's a time, time for everything, man. You know, we're now at the end of your rulership. Now, when the job is done, what do you do when the job is done? Get discarded. You know? So you saw it's going to be discarded by way of fire. That's it. It's fire. Wrap it up. You've literally fired. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, yeah. 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 Fired yeah. up. Literally. Fired up. I'm going to get a couple of comments with the comment board. Come. This is GMS South Carolina 08. So warm, so warm. So warm. This is um, Psalm chapter 149, verse 2. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains, you said chains earlier, and their nobles with fetters of iron. That's right, brother. That's the judgment that's written. So we see it, we read it, it's going to happen. Oh, yeah. And that's the level of faith that you have to have. Like, we about to witness everything that we've read, you know? And that means Esau Edom is going into slavery. The heathen nations are going into slavery. All right? This is Proverbs chapter 12, verse 10. I ain't got to get that. All right, I was in on that. Uh, any last scriptures? I got a good one. All right. This is uh, Obadiah, verse 16. Mm -hmm. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be, do uh, be as though they had not been. Mm. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. And there shall be holiness, and the houses, and the house of Jacob shall be, uh, shall possess their possessions. 
and the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them, and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for Yahweh had spoken. Yeah, what does that mean? Nobody remaining from the house of Esau. So that means Esau is going to get done away with, man. He's going to be discarded. Yep. He's going to be fired, like yeah. the brother said. Yeah. Man. He's going to be fired, man. Fuego. <laughs> Fuego. Yeah. yeah. Ash. Yeah. You know? And, and that's what we're waiting for. That's the patience and the faith of the saints. Right. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Right. That's right. He that killeth with the sword must be killed Kill with the sword. sword. That's the patience and the faith of the saints. Yep. We are waiting for these appointed times to happen. And in the midst of waiting for these appointed times to happen, we're occupying the prophecy. We're making sure that we are keeping up in the work, right. doing this work. Trimming the lamps, keep the oil up. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And Esau is that stubble. He's going to be the thing that is about to burn up. You see, that's why it's spiritual that they call us to blame that all this stuff is going right, on. Right, right, right. Because we that fire, man. Right. We kindling, you know, that fire, man. Oh, right. Man. And they the ones burning. You right. see? Hey, the most I said to Jeremiah, my words are going to be in thy mouth as fire. fire. And right. these people are going to be like wood. Wood. Yeah. Sorry, brother. You know what happened when the two elements come together? Two yeah. things should be a flame. Woo! Yeah. That's what you just read. Oh, yeah. Uh, read over that. Okay. I'm just laughing. It's so nice. Say it twice. Say it twice. Yeah, that's right, guys. What's up, kids? Yeah, man. Hey, so with that, we want to give all praises, glory, and the highest honor to Yahweh. Yahweh. Bashem. Yahweh. Bashem. Double honors to the other apostles, great millstone, peace of salutations to the elect out there and to spread across the four corners of the earth, pushing his word as a city and a truth. Shalom. 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 Shalom.